I'd like you to ponder what frustrates you. What frustrates you? On the front of your bulletin, you find a, a list there you can start writing down. I want you to write down what are the three things that annoy and frustrate and get under your skin. To maybe prime here at the pump, we'll get you some ideas. I was asking on Facebook this week, what, what annoys you? And, and I heard many, many things. I heard people being annoyed and frustrated by lack of respect, frustrated by themselves, frustrated by bullying, by dealing with traffic, standing in lines, the, the work ethic of others. Uh, people are frustrated with various parts of life. So go, go ahead and write down, uh, what is it that frustrates you? I'll, I'll tell you, I've filled out mine already. Uh, I put four top uh, annoyances and frustrations. Um, I, I get really annoyed and frustrated by folks who are aggressive and angry in how they debate. Like, if you, if you disagree, that's fine, but that doesn't mean you have to be a jerk about it. Uh, I get really frustrated and annoyed with that. I get really annoyed with myself. Uh, I get annoyed at technology that doesn't do exactly what I want it to do. And, and I get frustrated and annoyed when uh, people are left hurting without someone doing something about it. So that, that's what frustrates and annoys me. Everyone got your list down? You, you know what frustrates and annoys you? This was a ser the Sunday everyone needed their own bulletin. I should have announced that at the beginning. It was frustrating at Honeywell. We ran out of bulletins. And so that was a good frustration, but frustrating. Switch gears to another question. Let me ask, who here has done any camping? Any camping? Okay, so, some of you. You go out into the wild, you go camping, you go out in the wilderness. Doing anything that we do easily here is harder. You go out into the, into the forest and, you, and you're going to you want to have dinner. What do you have to do to have dinner? You're at home, you just throw some mac and cheese in the microwave and off you're, you're done, right? What do you have to do if you're going to eat and you're out in the wilderness? Well, first you're going to have to get your wood together, you're going to have to start your fire, then you're going to have to get out, your, you're going to have to cook. I mean, the whole process of just having a meal is a lot more frustrating and challenging than just throwing your mac and cheese in the microwave. If you're going to go to bed, what does it take to go to bed? You don't just jump in bed. First, you've got to find a sp clear spot that isn't going to get the rain run off. Then you've got to patrol the area and get up all the sticks and twigs that are going to stick you in the back and tear your tent in the middle of the night if you don't get them up. And so you get your nice clean area. You put down your footprint, the little tarp that you've cut to the size of your tent. You pitch your tent, make sure that's secure. Put your rain fly up. Then you can put your sleeping bag in, and then you can actually go to bed. Right? You go out in the wilderness, everything is more frustrating and annoying. Right? You just go and use the bathroom when you're out in the wilderness. It's just frustrating, right? It's just not as easy as it is when you're at home among what you are familiar with. And what's fascinating about being in the wild is it varies by person. If you've never camped before and I said, I need you, you're going to go camping tonight, it's this beautiful, crisp fall weather. It is beautiful out, isn't it? Right? I, I love this weather. And uh, if I went camping tonight, I am not worried in the least. This is not going to bother me. I have a good raincoat. I've got a good tent. I could be completely comfortable tonight. Some of you could. Some of you, if I told you to go camping tonight, that would be like wild and frustrating and annoying, and you'd rather just sleep in the car. But it varies, right? A friend of mine, uh, I could go camping for up to a week. It's not going to bother me. I would enjoy it. A friend of mine, Dave Peeler, uh, he goes camping, and uh, he, goes up into the wil he goes up into the mountains of North Carolina. And for me, that would be wild. That would be the wilderness. He'll go up the mountains in North Carolina in the middle of winter for two or three days because he likes it. Right? That, that, that to me is, is at the point at which you have to carry in your own food and worry about whether you have water, that, that to me has getting, gotten a little bit too wild. For him, eh, he just does it. For him being to go too wild would be like the Appalachian Trail, marching the whole Appalachian Trail. He could do it, but it'd push him. Right? It'd be uncomfortable and frustrating, and there are parts of it that would be annoying. The way that the wilderness is the place of frustration is what we see in Scripture. After the, uh, the Hebrew people are taken out of slavery in Egypt, they don't go directly to the Promised Land. Where do they go for 40 years? 
The wilderness, right? They go to the wilderness. They have been slaves for 40 years, and now they, they, so they've been living the life of a slave. You get up, do what you're told. At the end of the day, you are given food to eat, and then you repeat every day. Right? It's a horrible life, but there's not a lot of deciding or, or, or not, not a lot you've got to figure out in such a life. And then you go into the wilderness, and what do you have to figure out? You gotta figure out how to raise your kids in the wilderness. You gotta figure out how to be a family in the wilderness. You gotta figure out how to feed your family in the wilderness. You gotta figure out how you're gonna lead and resolve conflict. All the, think of all the things that they had to figure out in the wilderness and how utterly frustrated they would be day in and day out as they figured these things out. What, what was the point of this? Right? What is the point, what's the value in being frustrated? It's not fun. You don't get frustrated because it's fun. What's the point of being frustrated? In the spring of 1999, freshman Andy was meeting with uh, other musicians. I was joining the music fraternity, and I was meeting individually with each of the musicians in that fraternity, Phi Mu Alpha. And I was meeting with uh, Gregory Paul Cornelius. They called him Cornbread. And uh, Cornbread was a fifth-year senior, a super senior, so he was like the wise, ancient 22-year-old of the group. <laughs> and here I am, the 19-year-old, wide-eyed, trying to figure out, oh my god, college. And so we're chatting, and we're chatting about music and all this. And he says, Andy, you might as well get used to being frustrated. Because if you're not frustrated, you're not learning. <sighs> right? But it's true. When you go into a, if you get, take lessons, in, in co any, any music lessons, you walk in, you sit down, and the guy who's teaching the lessons, or the person teaching the lessons doesn't say, let's play what you're really good at. Let's play what's comfortable. Let's play what's easy. Let's play where you just sound spectacular. What they're going to say is, what are you really bad at? What are you frustrated with? What drives you crazy? That's what you're going to play. You can't play that high note. We're going to play that note until you can play it every time. And you're going to spend a half hour being frustrated. That's what you do. Because frustration is how you learn. If you're not frustrated, you're not learning. It, it, they're connected intrinsically. It's how you grow. It's how you get better. It's how it sticks. You get in the wild, into the wild, whatever the wild is for you, and you're frustrated. That is where you learn things, often the hard way. This is the wilderness that the Hebrew people had to live in for generations. They were slaves. They were marked by that. They were formed by that. They had to be frustrated for a generation so that they could learn to govern themselves and to live in the wilderness, to live as nomadic tribesmen again, something they had completely forgotten how to do. They had to learn it again. So God leads them into the wilderness so that they can grow up as a people. He doesn't let them die. Right? He, here's manna. You're going to eat. You're going to be okay. Here's water. You're not going to die from lack of water, but you're going to struggle, and here you go. Right? You've got to learn now. Uh, one of the best books to help you read the Bible is called uh, Manna and Mercy. The youth are reading it right now. It's a, a gloss. It's a survey of, the, of Scripture. And, and the way it talks about uh, the wilderness is it calls it wilderness school. When you need to learn something... You go to the wilderness. That's where you're frustrated. That's where you learn. That's where you're annoyed. That to be in the wilderness, to be frustrated, does not mean God doesn't love you. It means that God loves you, and it's time to learn something. It's time you have something that you need to figure out. Something that you're not going to figure out when you're comfortable. That's how we learn. And so, what do our frustrations teach us? Get out your list of frustrations again. Right? You're going to look at those a few times. Frustrations. I get frustrated with people who make aggressive arguments, demeaning arguments, belittling arguments. What is, what's the frust what, what, what is that frustration going to teach me? It's going to teach me to be patient and try to understand why are you so angry that you need to argue like that? What is so broken in you that I need to listen and understand? Because we all know, who do you actually listen to? You listen to people who love and listen to you. And so if I'm ever going to get anywhere with people who, make who use argumentation that's dismissive, dismissive and demeaning, I need to listen to them until they understand how much I love them, and I can embody what it says. In 1 Corinthians 13, love endures all things. Darn it, that verse has been getting to me all year. Right? That's what that frustration teaches me. I get frustrated with myself. Anyone here get frustrated with yourself? Right? I get frustrated with how I work. I work in a very compulsive fashion. I just work and work and work and work and work, and then I crash for a day or two, and it's not healthy. Uh, it's not a healthy thing. I, I, need, I am 
It is teaching me to find a better stride, a better work on this much and then stop and be able to then go be dad and be husband and be Andy and, and to find a better, I'm deeply frustrated with myself and how I work. All right, that's, whew, got a lot to learn there. What else am I, I'm frustrated by technology. When a computer will not do what I want it to, I will yell at it. Anyone else yell at your screen before? Oh my God, I, ah, I, I broke down in tech, that, thing back there, that board has been annoying me since the day I got here, right? I got so frustrated this week, I finally gave in. I asked for help. <laughs> that frustration is teaching me something. I had to ask for help. And now the video is going to sound really good when I post it on YouTube. It's going to sound crystal clear because I finally learned. I get frustrated when people are hurting and nothing is done about it, and that just teaches me to do something. Even if I can't do much, you got to do, I have to do something. You know that we all know people that are patient and graceful and wise, people that we want to grow up and be like one day, and I can tell you they didn't get like that overnight. Saints don't just happen, they are a result of a life of following Jesus, especially following Jesus into the wild, into frustration, to be teachable learning from that frustration so that we are taught patience and grace with each other. We are taught how to find a good rhythm of our own life. So we are taught to just get over what we need to get over or ask for help, teaching us when to buckle down and to get involved. There are going to be seasons of frustration. There are many seasons where we're not as frustrated, but let me warn you about one thing. If you are never frustrated, what's that mean? Does that mean you're perfect? That means you're giving in to temptation. If you're never frustrated, you're, always, you're just giving in to temptation. And what, temptation is the easy answer. Have you ever heard the phrase, for every problem, there's a quick, easy, and wrong solution? There is, isn't there? Right? For every problem, there's a quick, easy, and wrong so solution. And, and we see that in the story of the Hebrew people as they're, as, they're, as they're frustrated, right? They've gone out into the desert, and they are deeply, deeply frustrated. And they're frustrated because they, they see Pharaoh's army coming up behind him, and they go to Moses, and they say, Moses, weren't there enough graves back in Egypt? Have you brought us out here to die? And then the, the Red Sea is parted. And then a, a little bit down the road, they go to Moses and say, Moses, we used to, they used to feed us back in Egypt. We should just go back to Egypt because we're not getting any food out here. And the next day they have manna. And, and then they go to Moses again and they say, Moses, did you bring us out here to die of thirst? You know, we used to work by the River Nile. And then they, they have, they're frustrated. They have to learn how to find water. You hear the frustrations there? They're frustrated because they're afraid for their safety. They're afraid they're not going to have anything to eat. They're afraid they're not going to have anything to drink. And they need to learn how to take care of themselves in the wilderness. But there's always a group that's saying, but can't we just go back to Egypt? There's always a back to Egypt committee, isn't there? Can't we just go back to Egypt? Can't we take the easy way? Can't we just do that simple, easy, wrong answer? It'd be simpler. And, and uh, you know it gets bad when uh, it's in Numbers 11. We, we hear, like, this is the last big frustration complaint we hear. And it's this like campfire scene where they're complaining, the, the Hebrew folk. And one of them is going, man, I miss the meat. I, we had such good meat back in Egypt. And the guy next to him is saying, you know, and the garlic, the garlic and the leeks were just so good. And then the next guy is, so, and we had melons. Every morning we had those juicy melons for breakfast. And the last guy goes, man, and do you remember the cucumbers? The point at which you are complaining and willing to go back to Egypt and slavery over cucumbers, you know you've got it bad. Like, I've never bet Jones that hard for a cucumber. That I'm, it was bad, right? They want to go back so bad. They're so frustrated. And Moses goes to the Lord, and it's in Numbers 11. It says, why have you been so hard on me? Why have you given me such a people to take care of? They're, these aren't my people. These are your people. You take care of them. If you're going to treat me like this, just put me out of my misery and let me die. You hear the frustration there? Moses is frustrated himself. What does he need to learn? Right? He, the, the temptation is, let me just be done with this leadership. Let me just walk away. Let me just die and be done. And the Lord says to Moses, what does he need to learn? Gather 70 people, and I will pour out my spirit upon them, and they will help you to lead. 
Moses had to learn something too. It's the people are learning to be able to eat and to drink and to take care of themselves in the wilderness. And Moses is learning how to lead and how to bring up other leaders. All the while they're being tempted by, by, by that back to Egypt. Can't we just go back to Egypt? Can't we go back to how things used to be? We, we see temptation handled well when we see Jesus go into the, the wilderness. He goes in the wilderness for 40 days. And how is he tempted? He's hungry. Right? He is tempted because he is hungry. And he is told, quick, easy solution, right? Stones, bread, done. And he says, no, I'm not going to take the quick, easy answer. For we must, trust to learn, must learn to trust the Lord our God. You don't live by bread alone, but by the word of God. The next temptation is uh, the, the brokenness of the world. He, Jesus knows he needs to fix the brokenness of, of the world and the politics and the power and how it works. And the, the devil says, here, I will give you easy power. You can be in charge of everything. Done. Easy. Quick. Simple. Right? And Jesus has to resist that and say, no, I will transform through the cross. It's not going to be the easy way. I've got to learn that. Jesus w wants people to understand who God is. And so the devil says to him, come up on top of the temple, throw yourself down, make a spectacle. Everyone will see you. And there it is. Everyone will figure out who you are. And, and Jesus has to resist that simple, quick, easy answer and say, no, I will, I'll do it the right way. I will, I will learn. I will do this the right way. So temptation is the easy answer. It's the answer without learning. It's the answer where we don't become more like Christ. And I can tell you my temptations. Aggressive arguments, right? What's the, what's the temptation when someone is being really demeaning and arguing to you? What's the temptation for you to do? Argue back. Right? An undergrad professor of mine looked at me after we had a set of debates. So we were each representing a different religious tradition. He said, Andy, he pulled me aside afterwards. He said, Andy... You have a mind as sharp as a razor. Try not to cut anyone with it. Right? That was a compliment I have never forgotten. Well, I'm not sure it was a compliment. Right? I can do it. I can be... Right? That's my temptation is to argue back. My temptation with myself, right? My temptation is to say, I'm good enough. Y'all don't know my struggles when it comes to my work habits. You don't know. I, my wife puts up with me. My kids haven't run away. I, I'm good enough. I'll just stay as good as I am. I don't have to get any better. That's my temptation. My temptation with computers and technology is just to buy a new one. You ever want to just buy a new one? Yeah. My temptation when it comes to people who are hurting is just to say, let someone else take care of it. Look at your uh, list of temptations. What's your, or your list of annoyances? What's your temptation? When you are annoyed, what are you tempted to do to short circuit it, take the quick, easy answer, the answer that you don't actually learn from? You just be done with it. Let's say that I become perfectly patient with my computer and technology and sound equipment, and I ask for help and I'm patient with them. Let's say that it happens tomorrow. Do you think I'm going to stop being frustrated with life? That's it. 37. That's the year. I stop being frustrated with anything in life. Nope. Right? In Scripture, the Hebrew people, they learn to live in the wilderness, and they go in the promised land, and that's good. They've learned their lesson, but they have to learn other lessons. And down the road, they go into exile as another type of wilderness. They have to be, be taught lessons again. You're never done being frustrated because there's always something more to learn. Uh, I was asking about this online, and one of Olivia's friend, uh, Star, over in a lady named Starlene Zamora, she lives over in Macon, she, she wrote to me and she said, what I have been frustrated about over the years has changed tremendously. Maturing from child to teen to mother, maturing in relationships because of this growth, family, friends, children, and husband, I believe our frustrations grow up alongside us because our perspective changes. If I'd asked you what were your top three annoyances a decade ago, what would, you, would it be what you wrote today? No. If I had written down a decade ago, what I, if I had told you what annoyed, annoyed me and frustrated me the most, what was the thing that had me most feeling like I was in the wilderness, I would have told you the ordination process. It would have been number one, two, three, and all the way through ten. I got turned down for ordination. I had to take three swings at it. While people I was in the same group with, they were done after one swing, and I had to stand there and watch them be ordained while I was not. And I got told again and again, no, you're not a good theologian. You don't understand scripture. Right? It stung deeply. I mean, you tell me I have a problem. Well, pfft, 
of course I've got problems, but that sense that they didn't understand me and, and that um, it was one of the most frustrating experiences of my life. And I come out of it and I've learned something. I've been shaped by it. I am firmly convinced and assured that my ministry is not validated by any piece of paper given by someone else. It is by us being here together. I don't need anyone else out there to say anything. We're here together. That's what makes me a pastor. Right? And I could have said that a decade ago, but I had to walk through the wilderness for years before I really knew it. Right? And now I know it, right? Now I'm not frustrated. Uh, now I have children, uh, <laughs> right? There is always something new to frustrate. That doesn't mean that God doesn't love you. It just means that God's not done with you. God's not done with you. Okay, one last time. Look at your list of annoyances and frustrations. I invite you this afternoon to do two things. One for yourself and, and one for me. I want to invite you to take some time to jot down what are those frustrations teaching you and how are you handling the temptation that goes with them. And then the thing I ask you to do for me, I'm going to be going sermon hunting this afternoon. This afternoon and all of tomorrow, I'm going to be finding the sermons for the next eight or nine months. Pray for me. And if you have an idea, you have a topic, you have a question, drop me an email. I'll write a sermon on it. It'll be fun. So it is my prayer that I cannot pray that you never be frustrated. I can pray that you learn the lessons of your frustrations quickly. May your frustrations teach you what you need to know quickly. Amen.